Here out in the snow in Davos, I have with me the chief of one of the largest energy management companies in the world, John Pascal Trequa of Schneider. A pleasure to have you on NDTV. Thank Hi. you. Pleasure to be with you. Let me begin with the big conversation here in Davos, which is about globalization and what that means specifically to the energy management field and the future of global energy. What do you think will happen in year 2017? Well, there, there is a lot of debate, as you said, about globalization, but, but anyway, this world is global. And when you speak about energy, it's even more global, because energy, it's about two things. It's about fighting climate change, and whatever we do in each and every of our country, we share the same planet, so everything, and energy is a big part of the equation. Mm -hmm. And the second part is that still you have two billion people on Earth who don't have a reliable access to energy, and India knows the problem, or part of the problem, and it's our duty as a technology company to help solving uh, this issue. So when we speak about energy here, by definition, it's a global problem because resources to provide energy are global. The deadlock we face with climate change is a global problem and we need to join forces to solve the energy problem. Right. I have to ask you uh, about something which is personal. I think I read um, somewhere that you said that you used to drive your motorcycle 20 kilometers uh, in uh, near the town that you grew up in and now you want Shriner to go way more than those 20 kilometers all over the world. Yeah. Is that uh, something which is really reflective of Schneider's philosophy and what that does, does that specifically translate into the Indian market where you are investing 750 crore rupees in the next five years? Well, yeah, I didn't know you, you, you read about that, but yeah, I was born in, uh, in rural areas, so, and I, uh, I, since then I've gone global, uh, so I spend my time traveling around the world, making of Schneider, because what we do is technology, and if you want to be good in technology, you have to operate on a global scale, because we want to bring to our customers, where, wherever they are in the world, the best solution, wherever it has been designed in, in the world. So we've got, for instance, a very large R&D center in uh, in India 1500 people uh, but we've got s facilities of that kind in Europe in the US in uh, in China in other countries of the world and we want to be able to leverage at globality that proximity to the most advanced customers that capacity to attract the best talents wherever they are in the world give them equal chances and be sure that we can bring to our customers those solutions in the world. And today, our presence is very global. We do 30% of our business in the Americas, on the whole continent. We do, Asia Pacific has become our largest region, so it's more than 30% of our business. And what we do between Europe, Africa, and Middle East represent the rest of the group. So it's pretty much one third, one third, one third. I'm very proud of that. That means we've been able uh, to operate as local companies everywhere we operate. And when we operate in India, um, we've got more than 20,000 people in India, which is actually more than in my country of origin. In, uh, in France. We operate with 28 factories, so I know the passion that uh, uh, Mr. Modi has for making India. We have 28 factories uh, in India. We are a very large exporter. What we manufacture is in, in India is sold in India, but we have one of the largest exporters outside of India into uh, the rest of, uh, of the world. And more so, we create in India. We uh, innovate in India. And everything we do is about digitizing where we live, we work, and we travel. Our cities, our buildings, our factories, the places where, where you travel, merging the technology of energy together with the digital technologies to make everything more adapted to what we do in our life. Right. You know, but 400 million people in India don't have access to energy. So how would you say your strategy in the Indian market would specifically translate to address that? Is there a path that you have in mind and specifics perhaps with the likes of uh, the Siemens that you're also competing with in the market, a specific strategy where Schneider sees its India vision? Well, we, we from the beginning uh, have considered that we had a very specific duty to apply our technological capabilities to supply energy to the people who don't have access to it. So we are speaking about 2 billion people in the world who don't have a reliable access to energy. 1.3 billion don't have 
at all access to electricity, a bit more than 250 million are in India. And to serve or to solve uh, that issue, you need to develop technologies which are very specific to India because India is a huge country. It has very specific characteristics, uh, in some places humidities, uh, uh, the differences of temperature, uh, the, the, the electrical supply on the grid can be uh, variable. So actually we have been developing now for uh, many years very specific products engineered in India, manufactured in India, uh, that supply most of the inverters that you find in the Indian homes, and we couple them, we couple them with, with renewable sources of energy to be able to supply energy to villages. So if you take the past years, uh, the past, actually the past few years, we've supplied electricity to more than uh, 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 to almost 400 villages, I would say, and uh, 100,000 people. And to do that, we've trained uh, a lot of electricians, people who are very often coming from underprivileged uh, uh, origins, and scaled them up. Uh, that's a big axis of what we do in India, actually with the government, give uh, uh, people the skill to go into those new technologies of electricity and automation so that they would, bo would be able to go back to their communities, electrify those communities and maintain those devices. Right. What about the demonetization shock in India and you know the fact that many people are saying that reforms haven't sped up to uh, the uh, scale that word was desired earlier. Do you feel that there are impediments and challenges that you feel strongly on the ground which are not uh, being able to uh, make your vision come true sooner uh, than you want? Look, I mean, I can't comment on that. When I see, uh, well, first, you, you can't, you, I can only watch with admiration uh, the journey of a, of a country of more than one billion people. There are not many countries in the world like this. Um, and and uh, when I see the journey we have accomplished with our people in India, uh, the journey that the country has accomplished in the past years, uh, it's quite remarkable, the pace of change. Now you can always be uh, picky on things and say it could have been, but at the end of the day things are happening and they are happening faster than in the mature countries in the West. Uh, because, well, uh, when you are in India, you have no choice. I mean, you, you changes are happening faster than in any other place. And if you look at what Schneider has been doing, uh, we were quite small in India till a recent time. We've been in India for the past 50 years, actually 53 years, uh, to be exactly. Uh, but we really started to develop fast at the beginning of the year 2000. And India, in, uh, in 15 years, has become uh, one of the largest countries of, of, of the world and again I've got in India as colleagues more people than I have in my country of origin so I'm very proud of this pace of transformation and the ambition on the, on the, on the, on the, on the talent of our Indian colleagues. One final question on climate change, uh, which has been dismissed by the new President of the United States, but is very much a relevant conversation piece, and particularly how it relates to the energy industry, as well as India's foray into alternative energy. People are saying India's on the cusp of a solar revolution, so to speak. So from Schneider's perspective, how would uh, you piece this? Well, we, uh, the core focus of Schneider, first, I think people don't realize enough that the greenest, the cheapest, uh, source of energy is saving energy and, uh, and it's one of the priorities of India and we really want to contribute to that. We, we also contribute a lot to the equipment of India with renewable energy. I spoke about that just before and uh, we've done a lot of renewable energy installations, supplying the systems and the technologies uh, for that in the past uh, in in uh, in the past years. I think we've we've supplied or equipped two gigawatt of uh, of solar energy. Uh, only in 2017, we are going to add together with our partners, our customers, one more gigawatt of uh, solar energy. India has a tremendous asset with uh, with its climate on uh, on the sun on. And somewhere there is an advantage to be a late mover, uh, to come because you can really think in a different manner the grid where uh, I would say the mature countries had equipped the country with a just a grid. It's possible to do microgrids uh, which are cheaper, 
easier and faster to set up. And I think we have, uh, in terms of innovation, a lot of things that we can accomplish together with our partners in India. Thank you so very much and more power to your India dreams as well. Thank you. Thank you.